In this example, we're going to see a basic for loop. So it's just doing 4i 0 to 10 and printing out the values. And there happens to be an i minus minus at the end for no good reason. There's also no return value for this. So we get some new assembly instructions, inc for increment, or that's probably the i plus plus, and dec for decrement, that's probably the random i minus minus I threw in. But why is this in the Boolean section? It's because I would like to direct your attention to the fact that it is zeroing out the return value before this function returns. Why is it doing that? Because the programmer forgot to include a return value in main. So the compiler helpfully says, well, you know, I got your back. You forget a return value. I'll just go ahead and have you return zero. So the ink and dec instruction are pretty trivial. It's just going to be increment, so plus one and decrement minus one. These instructions both take a single source slash destination operand, which can be specified in RMX form, and they increment or decrement by one. Now, now when assembly is optimized, frequently compilers will tend to not include the ink and dec because in the Intel optimization guide, it says not to. So if you see an ink and deck, it may indicate that it's unoptimized code or the compiler is just you know, not doing Intel's best practices, or it might be even some handwritten assembly. Like other arithmetic operations, these are ultimately going to change the various status flags. So if we had rax equal to be sotted and you XORed it with itself, you'd get down to zero. And if you inked that zero, it would increment up to one. If you had RAX equal to toadstool and you moved zero over RAX, getting you to zero, and you decremented zero, it would flip around to the FFFFF value, performing an integer underflow. So time to step through the assembly, and this is a for loop, which you haven't seen before. So this should give you a good example of how the assembly jumps around backwards and forwards when it's executing a for loop and how it ultimately jumps around when it's done with the for loop.